Today I want to show you how to refactor your graph. Oftentimes you have a graph model um, that you want to change or evolve and the um, Epoch library provides a lot of functions and procedures to refactor your graph. So let's get started. We have the Epoch docs for this graph refactoring, we, which cover all the things. We go through that and try things out. And we have an um, Neo4j instance without any data, uh, where I just create the movie graph very quickly that we're going to use today. So there it is. So we have movies and people that acted and directed in these movies. And we also have a few, where are they? Reviewed, uh, a few people who reviewed uh, movies as well. So with that, uh, we want to work today. So the first one that we want to look at is um, cloning notes. So imagine you have a certain movie or a certain set of movies and you want to clone it. So we can just say match uh, P person real name is Keanu Reeves to MP. So let's see if we find him. There he is. And, oh, sorry. and now we want to refactor this and uh, clone this uh, person node. So we just call epoch refactor clone nodes with relationships, because I don't want just Keanu to be cloned, but also his relationships. And then I pass in P, and then what's interesting, no, that's actually only interesting. And these factor points, they just all have an input and output. So the input is oftentimes just the ID of the node that has then either be moved or deleted or changed or so, and the output is the new, um, new stuff. And then we just return P on the output. So let's try that. It expects a list of nodes, so we create a list of nodes. So you can clone multiple ones at once. So now we say here is Keanu Reeves with ID 162 and with 144. So the first one is the original one, the second one is the um, cloned one. So, uh, and you see it also cloned uh, the relationships with the properties as well. Okay, so this is nice. Sometimes we need this uh, for some operations. Um, there's also a really interesting uh, call uh, with subgraphs. They can clone full trees and things like that, but we won't go into that. That's a separate episode. Um, if you want to get rid of duplicate nodes, so imagine we had this duplicate node that we just created, or from, from import we have duplicates with of people with different names that is by the same email address and we want to uh, unify them. So merge nodes is really cool for, for doing that. So you basically call merge nodes with its collection of nodes and then you have a bunch of config options. So the simplest co config options are actually these down here. Yeah. Um, the sim simplest co config options are um, I want to merge relationships or not. So if you have relationships that point in the same direction and have the same type, then they can be merged. And for the properties, you can either provide a global option, what to do with them, uh, or a per property option. And these options are threefold. So this card uh, means the first node in the list uh, wins. So the, their properties are kept uh, override, uh, or, or override uh, means the last node wins, so you just overwrite always the properties and combine turns the properties into a list, which sometimes is useful. And uh, that can be done globally, so with properties colon and this word, or it could be done per property, and you can decide I want to have this property like this and this like this, and, and so on, right? So let's try this out. Um, we find our two Keanu Reeves nodes, let's see. Should return two if we find two Keanu Reeves nodes. Great. Then we uh, group them. So with p dot name because they have the same name now. Collect p as nodes. This is our set that we want to merge. 
Can we call epoch refactor merge notes? We pass in the notes. We say uh, merge else is true and properties. We want to keep the ones for the first node. Uh, this card. So, so on right now we had the two nodes with their relationships. Right? And if you run this, we have to call this name. And P is no longer yield output return or return, whatever costs now. Uh, yield. Okay, so this is our refactored merge node. So, and if you run the match again here, only one node is left, and it's perfect. So that's quite quite useful. Um, next one, uh, which I find really funny and, and useful, uh, because Cipher and Neo4j don't offer any API to change relationship, direction, and types. We added this to Epoch. So we can just redirect the collection, uh, direct, uh, direction of the relationship. So what you want to do is we want to take these reviewed relationships that I showed you in the beginning, these ones, and we want to turn them around. So we want to, instead of person reviewed movies, we want to say a movie was reviewed by person. So we can do this in one step or two steps. So we just take this uh, query here and say call a power factor invert we pass in the relationship, yield, output, turn, return, star. So we turn the relationship around. So it changed nine relationships. So if you run this again, you will see that suddenly all the arrows point in the other direction. All the reviewed arrows point in the other direction, which is cool. And now uh, we can rename these relationships and say epoch prefactor set type relationship and uh, reviewed by as the new name and you run this nine again so if you run this query again here it will find nothing because these relationships don't exist anymore let's try this okay nothing but we have now a new relationship type reviewed by and if you see the movies point to the um, person with reviewed by relations so that's cool as well so that's set relationship type. Type one. Um, the other thing that's interesting is extracting nodes from relationships. So you have a um, graph model that evolves, where you think initially it's good enough to store this information on a node, but later you kind of define or determine that you want to connect other things to that, or that this concept, this relationship, is actually a really important domain concept that you want to kind of graduate to a, to a node. So that's why we can call a refact node, uh, extract node. So we pass in a node or the ID of the node, then pass in the labels for the new node. And um, how the relationships uh, on the left and the right will be uh, named. So let's try this with the uh, active in relationship. So we have this active in relationship which has this role property, right? So, and we want to have a node with the role uh, property. So what we call, what we do is we take our query here again, do this call, uh, we pass in the relationship, then we say our new node should be called uh, role, and the person, uh, had role and let's say uh, in uh, okay from your left and to the right uh, and then I think it's again here the output if I'm not mistaken right yeah and then return count star. 172, that's the number of active in relationships. 
And now if you look at our data model, there should be a new uh, node type called John, uh, called node, and it shows you the roles of the people that were there. And if you uh, and look at these relationships, you see also head role and in movie, so you can also see there's um, Kevin Bacon has now all these intermediate nodes. Right, so that's a way of refactoring. And um, the next one is the inverse to that. So you can take a node and turn it into a relationship. So we can undo our change basically. So let's try this. Uh, we wanted to find roles. Okay. Uh, and let me just call epoch refactor. Uh, collapse node. And we pass in the node. And we pass in the relationship type. Put it in. And what else should we pass in? That's it. I think. So, and I hope that, yeah, it should have you. So, yield object. Turn code star. So, it should, and again, 172. And if you check, look at the sidebar here, role is gone, head, uh, head role and in role is gone. So if I run these queries in the origin, nothing anymore. Um, but if I run my acted in query again, I have my data back. Right. So that's kind of a way of refactoring a node by ex for extracting uh, domain concepts. Okay, uh, the next one is categorized, which is a bit, little bit more involved. Uh, but let's try if we can get it uh, working. So a categorize uh, takes uh, nodes. Uh, we want to take movie nodes and um, extracts a category. Oh, sorry, copy uh, this one. So it should extract the release property. So it uh, uh, categorizes is used to extract properties into nodes. So if you have a certain attribute that you rather want to have a node, um, then you can extract it. So we want to extract the release property and it's global. So we can't pass in anything. Uh, and then uh, we say in year, Um, we call it year and year and here. So this is the label of the node. This is the property on the node on the new node. And here are the other properties that you want to uh, pass along. In our case, it's nothing. And this is the batch size for iteration over larger um, events. So we can say a hundred or so, not a thousand. So and then yeah, I run this and then it says. Nothing happened, but it's not true because we have suddenly a year, you know, for every year. And if I click on a year, I see the movies in this year, which is also very useful and, and cool. So I don't have to do this manually. Of course, you can do it all manually with Cypher, but it's more more work. And it's also harder to transfer these uh, properties. Cool. Then other things that we can do is we can rename things. That's um, the uh, version where you can take an old label, return it into new label, old relationship type into new relationship type, old name into new property name, or um, relationship uh, properties as well. So for instance, if we don't like, um, if so we can optionally pass in nodes. If you don't do this, it Applies it to all the nodes. So we, for instance, we can, if you don't like a person anymore, we can turn it uh, as a say cast. So it says 133 and did all these things. And now instead of a person node, you have a cast node here. Uh, I'm not sure 100% if it also. Oh, exactly. So it returns a list of indexes and constraints. So if you had an 
create constraint or create index on cast name. Okay. So if you want to undo our change that we just did, we just flip them around here. And then oops. Cast. Then it also says which index should be updated. Right? And which constraints. So and that's it with graph refactorings. Thanks a lot for watching and I hope you'll see also all the other cool Epoch movies. If you have any feedback, please provide this to us in the near future community on the community near future com or uh, raise issues on GitHub uh, on the Epoch directory. Thank you. Bye bye.